<laughs> Welcome to the new workbench. Um, let's see. I'm going to put my chair back. I got it set up so I can do all of my prototyping over here. Uh, I've got a prototype board for my breadboard, and usually I'll leave that there, and I'll prototype something, and when I'm ready to solder it, like I've got a, a radio kit that I want to build later to show how to do an antenna. So when I want to work on this workbench, I can take and roll out my silicone mat, bring this down, and now I have a place, and I can set my camera over behind my workbench, or um, I'm building a camera, an overhead camera mount. I'm building one out of extruded aluminum. Cost me like 50 bucks. It's gonna be one meter tall by 1500 millimeters wide, and or 1.5 meters wide. And so I'm sitting here going, I don't know why I would pay $200 for a camera mount when I could build one real cheap. So I'm going to build one and it's going to sit here and I'll be able to have a down view of whatever it is I'm working on, especially these projects like these. And then I got my shelf mounted and I put in a light block here so that the light wouldn't flush me out too bad. And of course, you know, I've got my, my desk light here that I can use to work wherever I need to work. And if Let's say this is too much light. I can reach over and turn that light off and I've still got, you know, a smaller light if I want it. The next thing, I've got to take care of some bins over on this side of my workbench. Then I've got to build a small table and put like a, maybe a, an enclosure around it for my 3D printer. Because my air conditioner is right behind me and that's to keep me from being too hot. Uh, but it is not good for 3D printing. So I'm gonna probably build some type of cabinet with like a glass front so I can keep an eye on it. But this is my new workbench. And of course, when I go to do formulas, I now have an easier way to do formulas on camera. Big nice dry erase board, plenty of markers for that. So, Welcome to Dave's DIY, man. I'm so glad to have this whole set up. And then, of course, any projects I build, I'm going to have them set up here. Like, I've got my function generator. Um, I have this little project, which I'm not going to disclose what that is readily. I may cover that in a future video. But... You know, I've got my ham radio stuff up there. My, I can print finally. Got my my regular printer back up, and being able to do projects again is going to be real nice. I have been I have been feeling under the weather, not being able to do my projects. I've been stuck music the music side of things, and I have I'm rusty on music. You know, it's been a been a hot minute since I sat and practiced and practiced. I mean, I still play daily, but playing an hour a day is only maintenance for me. I don't know about other guitar players or other musicians, but an hour of drums, an hour of bass, an hour of guitar, that's, that's maintenance. That's only going to maintain what I've already learned over the years. That's not going to teach me anything new. I, I'm going to have to sit and play and play and play. But I can't play when I can't work. I like to work and then play. So... Having this set back up and having my power supply, my soldering station. We'll do a little unboxing. All right, that's unboxed. Finally have a trash can by my workbench. The racer is not very good. I didn't expect much. But the next thing is that the camera mount that's going to go here, up and over for the down view I've got one final LED, a four foot LED that's going to mount either on the back side or maybe on the underside. I'm not exactly sure how I want to mount that just yet. 
but the purpose of that is because this light may not be enough for camera. This light is very bright, easy to see. So if I put you know a project under it, you know it'll be reasonable uh, to take a look at. So this is part two. The I really don't have anything left to build that I can think of except I want to do, like I said, the enclosure for the 3D printer and get that set up nice and neat. And then over here I want I've got my ham radio. It's a two meter ham radio. I want to set that back up so I can get back on the air. Um, I bought all kinds of little small stuff that's sitting over here that I wanted to tinker with. I finally got all of my capacitors. This is three boxes of capacitors. Ceramic, electrolytic, and mylar, I think, or film. They are film capacitors. Then, of course, I got my diodes, big box of nice diodes. This is an assorted kit of different things like op amps. I got LM386, LM358, the LM324, and then of course, a big old box of transistors, potentiometers. I got some other stuff sitting over here. I mean, it's stuff that every electronic person would probably have. But I just wanted to give you a tour, you know. I mean, I've, I have not been able to do any projects on camera decently. All of my videos have either had potato vision or crap audio or both. And I'm like, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad in person. So I got a better camera, which we're recording with now. My workbench is better lit, better set up for video recording, not just working. My workbench is more open and spacious for a camera. You know, it's a little darker over in this corner than I would really like it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some like accent lights and stuff. Maybe, maybe like a uh, one of those vertical lights or something like that, just to shine on the ceiling. I'm going to go in and add some trim, make it all nice and pretty in here. But it's been taking so long because I had to stop and save the house and falling in the ground. You know, what's the point in building this stuff if I'm going to have to move because my house caves in? So I saved the house. Now I was able to build my workbench. Boy, look, it's been one heck of a ride to get here. I'm out here. I, I feel crazy. I'm talking to an empty room. It's, it's you, the watcher, and me the crazy tinker sitting in here by myself talking to a camera. So, <laughs> the only other thing, the reason all of the lights were not on in the last video, I didn't have a power strip. I've got a 10 socket power strip back here now that's really nice. I, I don't really need a lot of power because I don't, I don't run but, you know, lights and a soldering pencil at one time. But, you know, having that option, having my power supply being right here and readily available. Something broke on my power supply while it was in storage. I might have to buy a new one. I hope not. And I say buy a new one because this one, I've tried taking it apart and I can't fix it. Um, it's, I think it's out of my skill set. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not going to talk negative on that. I'll, I'll give it a chance. But right now, it. It works, but only on voltage mode. It doesn't work on current mode. So it may just be time to buy a better one. This is made. This is one of those real cheap, like $30 power supplies. It isn't going to break my heart if it stops working because I can then take it apart and figure out what's wrong with it and learn something, you know? <laughs> uh, something handy to have. Wire strippers. There, you, you literally pinch the wire here and it's got a section that gauges how big the wire is regular wire cutters in fact I got an entire electronics toolbox that's behind me 
on this in this box here and it was all I had a, anybody who's seen the old workbench knows I had a, a four foot tall this is two foot or 60 centimeters but I had I had a 120 centimeter or, or four foot tall pegboard the full 12 feet wide this is only eight feet wide and it's uh, this is four feet plus the two feet so this is six feet from the pegboard to here and so this is plenty for what I do for small projects um, I'm actually debating on building me a wood workshop for things that relate to sawdust and drilling metals and other types of things so if you guys are interested in seeing like how I built the structure stuff and not just I brought it in what you saw is me bringing it in and mounting it but you didn't get to see how I cut the wood and how I shaped it and measured it made sure it all fit because I've been building stuff for so long now that a lot of times I'll just look at something and can cut it somebody that's inexperienced they might need an explanation on how to do that or they, they might not I don't but that's what I got for you I just I was excited and wanted to share it uh, my soldering station this 3d printed solder caddy has been such an, a great little tool and I did this I designed this in uh, 3d infusion 360 I painted a black rubber bottom on the base of it and the reason let me show you at an angle the reason I'm made such a big deal about this on a print is because it holds with I mean there's less than a millimeter of tolerance there it's so tight it it won't even fall in you have to get it perfectly straight and it won't wiggle this one is actually pressure fit and I did that on purpose for the sole reason that when I'm doing my scrape my tip in my brass brush it doesn't like go sit anywhere solder sucker which this solder sucker doesn't suck as well as it should suck it sucks in the bad way and then of course pressure fit for my, my actual pencil and I made a old-time movie reel for my solder and set that right there a little lip keep it so if I'm if I just want to pull off a piece I can So now that everything is back in its place, everything has a place almost, we can get back to tinkering and building it. I'm excited about that. It's been a it's been too long. So that's all I've got for you today. I appreciate you stopping by Dave's DIY. And if you want to see more, you know, let me know. If you want to see anything in particular, let me know. Because I've got an FM radio kit. And that damn oscilloscope kit that I've had since March, both of them are on the bench ready to go. I would prefer to wait to do any recording of these projects until my extruded load aluminum gets here so that I can make my camera mount. I think that might look better. And then on top of that, by the time that extruded metal frame gets here, I'll be able to replace my bent five-year-old cell phone that cell phone will come in handy because any any phone nowadays has a decent set of cameras on it so I'm thinking I might have two different angles maybe one in front looking down so you can kind of see what I'm seeing and I can interact with the camera and have it like somewhere on the video in the corner and then I can have the down view um, as the main video so you can see what's really going on up close so, I mean, I'm, everybody's got an overhead camera view on their workstation. Why not me? But in, I'm not paying two hundred dollars. I'm not paying three hundred dollars. I'm not paying hundred and fifty dollars. I paid fifty dollars. I went to Open Build or something like that. Dot org. You'll have to look up Open Build Extrude Aluminum on Google, and it's cheap. It's really cheap to build one. If somebody's interested, I will cover it, how I build it, but otherwise, I'm going to assume everybody knows how to build one, and I'm not going to do a video on that.
but I did want to mention that there will be a, an extruded aluminum frame here to hold my camera so if you see a down view later in the future that's why because I can't put my tripod in my in my legs and work around that that some people can and I've seen plenty of people pull it off that's not me I, I've tried it a couple times and it's you're over here trying to navigate I'm like that that's just unrealistic let's let's just be practical so what I'll probably do is I'll probably mount it so that the camera is dead center here and I have plenty of space and you know the reason for the cell phone is so that I could maybe capture so you can see you know what goes on when you can't see the project like whenever my hands go off to the side and may not be on camera you can actually still see what I'm doing I thought that might be nice but that's all I got for you so until next time